Happy endings in video games are far from a given. Sometimes the odds you're up against just don't turn out in your favor, either because of the choices you've made throughout your playthrough, or because the narrative was always doomed to end badly for the heroes, the good guys, whatever you choose to call them. Sometimes their defeat seems inevitable. In this feature, we'll be taking a look at 15 games where despite all your best efforts, or perhaps because of all your worst ones, the villains ended up coming out victorious. Obviously, there will be spoilers ahead for every game on this list. If you see us mention a game you don't want spoiled, skip ahead to the next entry. Red Dead Redemption Red Dead Redemption saw John Marston fighting with all he had to escape the cycle of violence that his life had been caught in since he had been taken in by Dutch Vanderlind as a boy. But we all saw how that turned out. Things kept spiraling out of control and Marston's past came back to bite him with the deplorable Agent Ross marching down on his ranch with a posse and tearing him apart with a barrage of gunfire. Jack would go on to avenge his father and kill Ross, but in doing so, he also ended up entering the life his father had tried so hard to keep him out of. Metal Gear Solid 2 while Solidus Snake is presented as the main antagonist for much of Sons of Liberty, it is eventually revealed that all his efforts had been to dismantle the tyrannical stranglehold the Patriots had caught the entire world in. Sure, Solidus's methods were, well, questionable to say the least, but at least his heart was in the right place. Of course, by the time Metal Gear Solid 2 comes to an end, the Patriots are no closer to being taken down. In fact, our heroes Solid Snake and Raiden don't even know who they are or what they are or how to track them down. Not a very happy note to end the game on. Persona 4 Golden Persona 4 Golden has a regular bad ending where the good guys and people close to you die in agony, but that's tame in comparison to the game's accomplice ending. This sees the protagonist, Yu Narukami, choosing to hide the truth of Adachi's crimes from the investigation team, instead confronting him by himself. Things don't turn out the way you would expect, though, and Yu ends up helping Adachi hide evidence of his wrongdoings, after which he is blackmailed to stay silent forever because by doing so, he's become an accomplice in his crimes, which means the murderer is still at large and probably always will be. Oh, and just to make matters worse, Nanako never recovers from her coma. Mass Effect 3 Mass Effect 3 caught more than just a teeny tiny bit of flack for its controversial ending back when it first launched, and in response to all the criticism, BioWare would go on to release an extended cut, which not only expanded upon the endings already present in the game, but also added an entirely new ending as well. That ending saw Commander Shepard rejecting the choices presented to him by the Catalyst, which essentially leads to the victory of the Reapers and the decimation of all advanced organic life in the galaxy. Sure, we get a a small glimmer of hope at the end, with Liara's beacon presenting the possibility of future life forms finding a way to bring the Reapers down, but with this ending, as things stand by the time the game concludes, the Reaper cycle of destruction and harvesting of organic life in the galaxy continues. Batman Arkham City the villains very much do not win in the canon ending of Batman Arkham Knight, with the biggest and baddest villain of them all succumbing to his sickness and dying. But Arkham City does have an alternate ending, which leads to just the worst outcome imaginable. Catwoman gives in to her selfish tendencies and decides not to go to Batman in his time of need, which leads not only to the death of the Caped Crusader and others like Robin and Jim Gordon, but also to all of Gotham City getting taken over by the bad guys. Resistance 2 Resistance 2 is probably the most grim of all the Resistance games, which is saying a lot because Resistance games are all pretty darn grim. Though Hale successfully kills Daedalus and is able to detonate the bomb to destroy the Chimeran ships, by the time Resistance 2 comes to an end, things are still not looking good. Nathan Hale succumbs to the Chimera virus and has to be executed at point blank by Capelli, which is bad enough, but let's also not forget that in the Midwest, the Chimera were able to kill a whopping 80 million survivors in a devastating attack. Yeah, not exactly a happy ending. Killzone 2 
If there's one single takeaway any of us took from Killzone 2, it's that Colonel Vasari, the leader of the Helgen forces, was a maniac. Killzone 2 does end with his death, but as it turns out, in the large scheme of things, things have never looked worse for the good guys in the series than they do at this point. The ISA has been all but obliterated, the likes of Jen Templar and Evelyn Batten are dead, while the Helgen now stand united in their goal, with the death of Vasari fueling them with highly motivating rage. Amidst all this, our heroes find themselves trapped on an inhospitable alien planet with the odds stacked heavily against them. Infamous 2 you probably saw this one coming. Infamous 2 has an infamously dire bad ending. If and when Cole decides to side with White, he dooms everyone and everything to the worst fate imaginable. LaRoche and the militia are destroyed, while Zeke and Nyx turn against Cole and steal the RFI. But not before Cole eventually catches up with them, kills them, and destroys the RFI. Not to mention the fact that Cole's rampaging also tears New Marais apart. Mortal Kombat Armageddon just about every Mortal Kombat fan agrees, Shao Kahn is a brutal and violent warlord who's been among the primary antagonists of the series for years, so it's not ideal at all that he ends up not only destroying Blaze in Mortal Kombat Armageddon, but also killing Raiden, leaving him to be forced to send back a message through time to his past self in the hopes that he can rewrite history. Mortal Kombat Armageddon is what ultimately led to the 2011 reboot though, so I guess all's well that ends well. Dead Space 3 Awakened Things rarely ever went well for the good guys in Dead Space, but the way they ended in Dead Space 3's Awakened DLC really takes the cake for grim endings. People are being slaughtered by necromorphs left, right, and center. The Earth is under attack with the Brethren Moons already having arrived, while one of them crashes into Terra Nova, leaving Isaac Clark and John Carver unconscious, and their fates hanging off the edge of a cliff very precariously. Halo Reach Going into Halo Reach and already knowing the fate of the titular planet, we knew that things were not going to end well for any of our heroes. But Bungie's final Halo title really dialed things up to 11 as far as being unbelievably depressing was concerned. All of Noble Team is systematically wiped out in its efforts to save Reach first, and when that proves to be futile, with Master Chief on board manages to escape safely. The planet of Reach is also decimated by the forces of the Covenant in a devastatingly cataclysmic attack. Crackdown we spent the entirety of Crackdown taking on major crime organizations across Pacific City, but when the game ends, it's revealed that it was all for nothing, and we were little more than tools being used by the real bad guys, the Agency. It was the Agency itself that had empowered and propped up the major crime organizations so that the city and its people would, out of fear, give the Agency the absolute control and power they've desired all along. It's a bit of a shame that the sequels never really went all in on following up on this conclusion. Fury Fury's story, like a few others on this list, doesn't necessarily have to end badly, but of the three possible endings, one of them allows you to make the decision to quite literally destroy the world. At the end of the game, when Ryder meets the star, he has a tough decision to make, but one of them has particularly dire consequences. Assimilating the planet and allowing the star to send out what is basically an army of Riders dooms the entire planet to complete destruction. Singularity Singularity offers players three alternate endings, but in a cruel twist, each one of them is a less than ideal ending in the grand scheme of things. One ending sees Beresov establishing his tyrannical rule over the world, another sees Renko and Demichev ruling the world together, but eventually becoming embroiled in a conflict that leads to a global and bloody civil war, while the third ending sees Renko himself becoming a despot and ruling the world with a chaotic iron fist. Not one of those endings is even close to being a happy one. Shadow of the Colossus 
The poster boy for games where the bad guys win, Shadow of the Colossus is a somber, melancholic game from start to finish, but the way it ends really drives its depressing nature home. We spend the game going through a desolate and empty world, hunting down and killing these lumbering, majestic beasts, only to find out that what we essentially did was break the final seals that had been keeping an evil entity locked away. Our hero's fate is not a happy one. His quest proves to be an exercise in futility, and the forbidden land is left at the mercy of an ancient, terrifying evil. And that about does it for this video. If you enjoyed what you watched and want to see more from Gaming Bolt, please hit the subscribe button. Also, don't forget to switch on the notifications bell icon next to it. That way you'll never miss any of our videos. Thanks for watching.